All right, so just to visit the supplies you're gonna need in general for this project, you're going to need a paper of your choice. So you can use anywhere from a 65 up to 100 pound cardstock. You could also use a glitter cardstock. So I've chosen some cardstocks here that for the one that I'm gonna be making in this particular tutorial, I'm doing a lot of different glitter and sort of pearl textures that have some shimmer to them. Because I wanted to kind of create sort of a golds and whites tones and cream tones to the wings of course you could do any color you want for the wings so this one here you can see is different shades of blue so that is an option for you as well so just choose the colors you want 65 pound 80 pound is the best glitter cardstock works well do not go over 100 pound and use 100 pound cardstock sparingly of course you'll be needing a cricut machine to cut this out with or some similar sort of cutting machine i'm using the cricut maker here but you could use the explore explore 3 the maker 3 any of those models are going to work fine for this project you'll need a cricut mat then as well i'm going to be using a light grip mat here but you could use a standard grip mat as well I like to have a brayer tool on hand to be able to push my material to my mat. Really makes a big difference. You may want to have a weaving tool as well because when we go to take off the backs of the 3D foam strip tape that we're going to be using, this can be very handy to get those backings off. So I'm using this 3D foam strip tape here and I have some different resources I'll link below for you. Um, it's really handy for these types of layered paper craft Mandela projects. So make sure you get some of that tape. I will also be using a little bit of quick dry glue as well, um, just for if like you're doing the picture layered part. If you plan to do a print and cut option for the picture, then you are going to need to have a printer on hand to do the print and cut part. If you happen to already have a picture that you're going to add to it, then you could just you know trace the template onto it and cut it out with a pair of scissors. That is an option as well if you don't have that print and cut. Um, alternative for yourself to work with. So let's go ahead and cut out our designs. We're going to load this file up into Design Space, and this file is completely free for you to enjoy. I think this is a great, um, beautiful thing to make as a gift if you've maybe had a loss in the family, potentially, you know, loss of a pet, a loved one, um, or you just want to remember somebody in general, this can be a great project in which to do that. So I wanted to give this template away as a freebie for you all to enjoy. So you can download that below in the video description. It is going to be available for you on members.abbykirstencollections.com as a freebie. Let's go ahead and get started with this project. Okay, so like I said, you can find these angel wing templates for free and they're linked below in the video description, so make sure you go and download them. And as far as design space prep goes, there's a couple of different options. They're all they're all optional, um, but if you need help understanding how to upload an SVG file, I have a separate video that will walk you through all of that below. Essentially, all you're going to do is go to your upload button here on the left hand side, and then you're going to browse your computer to bring in the SVG cut file. Once you bring the file in here to the canvas, you're gonna then need to think about your scaling. So are you going to be putting these into a shadow box? Are you gonna use them some other way? You're gonna to wanna to think about the size that you're going to do. So, whoops. So you would just select the group as an entirety and then you would look here at the size. So these wings here are 11.7 by 9.3. So just make sure that you're measuring like your shadow box or whatever it is you're using these on to ensure that it's going to be an appropriate size for you. And for like these angel wings in particular, you can always rotate them if you want them to be a little bit more upright and close together and that can save some space if you're putting them into like a shadow box or something like that. So you can always play around with how they will look ultimately just by changing the angle a little bit. Um, so that's just an example there. So think about your scaling. Um, and the size here. And then the other thing you want to think about is the colors. So you don't have to cut these out in the colors that they come in. You can, of course, change them to be any colors you want. If you want to play around with kind of um, representing the colors here on your canvas, all you need to do is click on any of these pieces in the layers panel and then go over to the little color swatch at the top bar here and you can change the colors and get very specific with your different colors. You can also use the color sync tool over here. So if you want to consolidate some colors so that you're not cutting out as many 
um, colors of paper and loading as many mats than you can. So for example, maybe I wanna consolidate this blue to, or this teal to this teal, and I could click and drag, and then you know it could do that. And you could decide if you like that. If you don't like that, then you can just hit the undo button up here at the top or control or command Z on your keyboard in order to undo that, um, or even just change the colors altogether. The last thing you'll want to think about is if you want to add a picture to the little heart frame. So the heart frame is detached and completely optional when it comes to these wings so that you could use them in different ways. If you do want to add a picture, you'll see that there is this base here of which to put the picture on top of. And then there's this little frame to kind of clean it up and go right over the top of it. So this center piece here, you can insert a picture onto it by using the pattern fill here in Design Space. So I'll just walk through that real quick. So with this heart selected, the center heart, the center heart I mean by the second layer. So you have the frame and then you have the base. So I'm selecting the second layer here of the heart. You'll wanna go up to the operation at the top here and go down to where it says print and cut because the picture would be a print and cut operation. So we would literally print it out on our printer and it would cut the outline of the heart around it. The rest of these are gonna be cut in their colored paper and then layered together. If you're not familiar with print and cut in general, I have an entire in-depth post on that below that I'm gonna link for you so you can visit that if you're brand new to Cricut and it will help explain the process in general. Um, all right, so once you've changed that to operation print and cut, the little swatch that's right here if you click on that and then you click on print type, you can change it to a pattern. And Cricut Design Space has its own patterns in here, but you can also upload your own and you could upload a photograph or an image as a pattern. And I've already uploaded some here, but I'm gonna show you real quick how to upload a pattern. So to upload a pattern, you would go to the upload button on the left-hand side. Instead of uploading an image, like we would with our SVG file, you wanna click on pattern fill and you wanna click on upload pattern. And then browse your computer for the photograph you wanna use. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. Okay, so you'll bring in your photograph and click the upload button at the bottom corner. And then it's gonna tell you that the pattern upload was successful at the top, but you're not gonna see it anywhere on this page. So just click the cancel button at the bottom because you're gonna find that pattern where we were a moment ago under the pattern fill. So selecting that same heart again that we've changed to print and cut, click on the little color swatch and then go back to pattern. It's gonna load up your patterns and you can see my image right there, it's kind of small. And I have some other family images here as well. I'm just gonna choose this one of me and my daughter for an example. And then you might notice the image might look a little weird when it inserts itself onto the heart surface. So what you need to do then is just edit the pattern. So I'm gonna click on the edit pattern and you can scale it here. And if you move the um, horizontal axis up or down, then you'll be able to shift the image. So if I move the horizontal axis, I can put that in the middle there a little. This needs to actually expand a bit, make it a little bigger. And I'm just shifting these using these tools here to get it. And you can actually type in numbers too. So if it needs to shift a lot, you could like type those numbers in. And you can also use negative numbers. So if we needed to do like negative 20 to get it to shift over, or maybe negative 30. There we go. So now that looks nice and centered and we can just close out this panel here and it will reflect here on our canvas. So when we send this to the cut screen here, this will literally go through the print and cut process. Again, I have an in-depth post on that below if you need more help. And then these will cut out in layers. So I'm just gonna hide this one here for now. Using my little eyeball tool over here in the layers panel, you can hide things and then bring them back when you wanna use them. So I would click on the Make It button, and then all you need to do now is connect your machine and select your material. So at the top here, we have our Print and Cut. 
that we would go through that process. And then we would cut out each of these layers in corresponding colors as we have set on our canvas. And I'm gonna just click continue now and it's gonna to connect to my maker machine. And then you'll just set your base material of choice. So if you're using medium card stock or if you're using a glitter card stock like I am, just select your material of choice here and let's go ahead and cut this design out. Okay, so I have some of my glitter card stock here and I'm gonna place that on my mat. Selected eight and a half by 11 paper size. The brayer tool is really great for pressing on your material, it can extend the length of your mats a lot. And then we're just gonna load this and let the Cricut cut it out and just using the fine point blade here that comes with the machine. And we'll press the go button here and it's gonna proceed with the cut. You're gonna do this for all of the layers. So, you know, feel free to use different colors, but um, ultimately whatever colors and combination you want for your layers, that will be up to you. Okay, so one of my cuts here is done. You would just repeat this with all of the layers and use the proper material setting of your choosing. So if you're using a medium weight cardstock, select that in design space. If you're using a glitter cardstock like I am in this example, then make sure you select that corresponding material as well. And your design will cut out something like that. And you're gonna repeat this with all the layers. So I've already cut out my layers of my wings here and you want to kind of keep them in order to keep things straight so and we're going to start layering this project together with our foam strip tape and the help of our weeding tool to get those backings off so this is probably the most time consuming part of this is just taking the time to layer everything and i'm going to start i'm sort of going to flip this over and i'm going to start with this wing here and this will be the first piece we lay down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna flip it over, so here's the top side. Flip it over this way, like that, and we're gonna load it up with some of this foam strip tape here. So I'm just gonna take a few minutes to place that. Of course, make sure that your tape isn't showing through any of the cutout areas, so you might need to trim it down or get creative with it, or even get different sizes of tape in some cases. So once you have a healthy amount of tape on there, then you can come in with your weeding tool and remove the backing here. And then once you've removed the backs, go ahead and flip this over, and you'll just need to take a minute to align it. So you wanna pay attention more to this um, left side and bottom, if you're working with the right wing here to getting things aligned. And once you feel you've got a good alignment there, go ahead and press that tape down into it. Give it a good press there. Okay. And now we'll move on to our next piece here. So I did some glitter and then this one here, it's hard to see on camera, but it has a little bit of a shimmer to it. So I kind of did that to create a little contrast, but still have sort of that shimmer effect that helps match the glitter, glitteriness of the wings. So, and of course you don't have to use glitter. That's not your preference. And as far as like the tips of the wings go, if you're concerned about wanting those all to have like contact with tape and everything, then you can cut small pieces of the foam strips and place them on the tips there just to offer some extra security. That's really your choice ultimately. I tend to do it in some choice places. Just so long as it's not gonna come up, you're pretty much good to go. Okay, so this piece is ready now and I'm gonna take this wing piece and again, lining up kind of more in the inner side of the wing there. Place that down, give it a good press. I like using these strips because you can kind of bend them. So if it's like too long, you can sort of curve them in the area that you want the strip to go. So I kind of like that. Take the backs off of these now. And we're just repeating this process. You can see that these wings are, the, the Cricut does the heavy lifting for you with the cutouts and they're very simple to make with this layering effect and it's a great project for beginners 
And I think this is a great way to make something sort of personalized for your home. Maybe if you're making sort of like a memorial item or something to remember someone by, you could do that as well and use these wings in that manner. Put them into a shadow box, which I think would be a really great option. Okay, so when we get down to this last piece here, you kind of have to be a little bit more careful with your tape. Just kind of making sure it's not going to show through from the top. And these wings here, like I didn't go too small with them. These are a little smaller, so you might have to get more creative if you go with smaller wings. I wouldn't go much smaller than this 11 inch size that I went with here. Um, personally, because then your, your, your little picture that we're going to add is going to be really, really small too. And you kind of want to be able to see that if you go that route. Um, so we're going to add this piece on here next. And I'm also going to include two other variations of angel wings as freebies in the vault. Um, so if you want to use, I have like one where the wings are kind of going down rather than up and a couple other options for you. So they would all be layered the same way. So don't get hung up if you're using a different one of my designs. They're all going to be very, very identical in the process of just layering, just like this. Okay, placing this last one here. So this last top piece, notice it goes on the inner part of the wing. It doesn't line up to this one, but goes up here. So that is one side of our wings done. And we can see all those pretty shiny layers there. I absolutely love this set. I wanted to show two very different contrasts of what you could do with the paper colors and stuff for the wings. So I'm just going to do the other side here so that we can complete the wing part of this project. Okay, so I have both of my wings done here. They're so pretty. I'm really happy that I chose these shimmering colors here. So at this point, we could stop and maybe we just want to use the wings for something, put them in a shadow box as it is, or we could add a picture with a heart to the center of them. You could also cut out other shapes and design space. So if you don't want a heart, maybe you just want a circle or even a square or something else like that, you could just cut out that shape using the free shapes in Cricut Design Space as well. Um, so I've already print then cut this picture here of my kids. I have one here of my little puppy as well. And so I think this will be cute because my kids are my angels. So I love that. Um, I think this could be something really cool too, like as a gift for somebody that maybe who lives far away. So maybe like a grandparent or a grandchild lives far away and you want to kind of have like a special way of displaying a picture. I think that could be a really cool use for this as well. So what I'm going to do basically is I'm just going to place this picture on the base of this heart here, add the frame over, and then we can stick it on top of this. Now these wings aren't attached, so this would either be holding this together or you could put this into a shadow box and then, you know, add this piece on top of it, whatever you want. And you could have the wings like nice and open. Of course, they'd be wider or you could have them more upright if you wanted and then place the heart down on it. It's really up to you what you want to do. Um, so I'm going to start first with just getting this layered here and I'm going to use my glue for this part. Okay. And if you wanted to protect the photo, something else you could do is you could cut some clear acetate sheets in a heart, the same heart here, and you could actually cover that and just glue it along the outer edges here. And then the glue would get covered with the frame. I'm not too concerned about that if it's going to go into a shadow box for me, so I'm not worried about it. But if you're planning to not put yours in a shadow box, perhaps, then that could be something you want to consider is like the acetate um, little window that you could put over the top of it. And so I'm just going to add my glue here around the frame. You do want to be careful when you're dealing with glue and ink like the ink from the printer because it can smear things. So just be very cautious with that. Again, if you you know want to do like an acetate window, which of course would still require glue, but just be cautious with it. And try not to scoot it around too much. And you're gonna to wanna to let this dry for a few minutes. I'm using a quick dry glue here, but still I wanna set this aside for just a few minutes to give it a little time to set up before I add it to the center of my wings here. Okay, so this is pretty well dry at this point. So I would recommend maybe a shadow box for this, um, but we could just connect this as well with some glue or some of the foam strip tape. I'm just going to grab some tape 
and place that around the back of the heart here. Okay, and then you just want to line them up and you can just place your heart in the center there, push down. Um, and then another option for this would be a shadow box. So all I would do here is I would just, I cut a white piece of paper for the back of my shadow box because I wanted a white. And then we would just place this on. I'd recommend either glue or potentially these foam strips. Again, we can just add some tack on the back here so that we know it'll stay in place. And then you want to flip these and center them. I just eyeball things guys, so there's no, <laughs> if you want to want to measure it and draw a little halfway point to help yourself, you can. Uh, but I usually just sort of eyeball things and press that down. And then I would do the same thing with the little picture here. We could just glue that down or put a foam strip around the edge of it here. And that will take care of attaching that. So this is my little puppy and she's a little angel most of the time <laughs> and we're just going to put her in there like that and then we could just cover with the shadow box so I would just place this down and there we go so there is my shadow box example with my wings and then we have the these here which I plan on putting into another shadow box. All right, so I'm planning on putting these angel wings and a picture of my kids inside a shadow box. And this is the base of my shadow box here. I just covered it in some fabric that I wanted to have as the background. And of course you could choose if you want fabric or paper to put on the back of your shadow box. And I'll link some resources below for you. I've also decided that on the glass of my shadow box, I'm going to place a phrase so I've cut out that phrase in permanent vinyl on my Cricut machine. So we'll get to that in just a minute. What I want to do first is I want to actually go ahead and get this set in my shadow box here. Okay, so there's a few different ways you could put this onto your shadow box. You could do a little bit of like quick dry tack glue, something that's compatible with like the fabric base if you're doing that. You could even get away with pins if you place them strategically. I'm gonna do pins for mine because I wanna be able to remove this at some point if I want to place it or use it some other way. So I'm just taking these little straight pins here and, and <clears throat> excuse me, you wanna put them in almost at a 90 degree angle, like as close to a 90 degree angle as possible. And you're basically just pushing it in. And because it's a mandela, we can slide that little pin head in there and it gets covered by the layers and then you can't even see it. So I like that option. And it only takes a couple pins to hold it too. So you don't have to worry about like glue everywhere and all of that. So get your <clears throat> items positioned. And then I like to go with the pin option. Okay, there we go. So I've got all of that pinned on there. And then if I wanna add my kid's picture with this, I've added some tape to the back and I'll be able to just press it right to the front of the wings. So that's my plan there. Okay, so you wanna get this on first, especially if you're planning on putting something on the glass because you wanna make sure you're placing that accurately based on how you put things inside of the shadow box. So at this point, I wanna take a look here because, okay, so I have my phrase here and what I did is I cut it out in white and I mirrored it in design space. And the reason I mirrored it is because I wanna put it on the inside of the glass here. And the best thing it's going to be to do is to first get it on the transfer tape and then we're going to basically stick something here on the exterior of the glass to give us a center point so that when we take the glass off to put this inside we're not worried about getting it you know not centered so i'm going to go ahead and get this onto some transfer tape <clears throat> i like to peel the liner away from the transfer tape and press crease and roll away if anything's not grabbed into that transfer tape initially So taking a look at this again, I'm just going to cut that tiny little piece of tape here. And it, 
probably won't be very visible on the camera, but that's okay. Okay, so looking at where my wings are, I put just a little piece of tape at that center part here. So when I go and take this off and I don't have the wings to reference, I'll be able to know where to stick my braids. So I'm gonna set this aside, flip this over, and I can still see that piece right there. And now I'm just gonna put this down and kind of center it right over that marker that I gave myself basically. And then before you actually burnish it on, it can be wise to just bring this back over real quick, flip it. And that's not bad looking, but I want it to go up a little bit. So that's why we check. All right, so I'm happy with the placement of that. Now I'll flip this back over and we'll go ahead and burnish it on. And because we mirrored it, once we put the glass the correct direction, it's going to read the correct direction, but it's going to be on the inside, which is going to be really nice because then we'll be able to like dust the front of it, wipe it down, and not worry about touching the vinyl. So I would love to know, um, do you like this tutorial? And don't forget to download the templates that are below. Um, how would you use these? Tell me in the comments. And I will see you guys there. Bye for now.